And I do feel like, and I'm sure anybody who's spent any time with me at all privately or in these sessions knows, that there's a tension between the psychedelic community, which is, to my mind, an exiled tribe of scientists, the psychedelic community. We're the heirs of Freud and Jung, but booted out of the tent of science because we dared to use the human brain body as an instrument. And so the only place where we can gain shelter and comfort is at the fringes of New Age religion. But these are not our people, these people. You know, they serve strange gods and bizarre agendas, and we need to not lose our identity among them because they play by different rules. Uh, now, maybe, you know, somewhere in the history of the world, through God knows what means, the truth was actually downloaded to somebody a messiah, a rabbi, a Buddha, somebody, a something, somewhere. But I find it unpersuasive, that idea, uh, because, uh, because truth is so contextually defined and precious that even if that had happened, what good would it have done you and me? You know, we receive these things hideously deformed by the metamorph the metamorphosis of historical process I live intellectually in a simpler universe than the one that my experience has taken place in in other words I could tell tall tales of shamanistic strangeness apparent telepathy impossible coincidental occurrences, even transformations of matter, and th I've seen all of these things, uh, but never under controlled conditions and never with anybody claiming they understood what was going on. What I doubt is that anyone understands any more of what's going on than I do. Not because it's an act of self-elevation, that I am so smart, that's not the thought. The thought is, everyone is ordinary. And it's incredibly disempowering to not realize this. You know, if you think that it belongs only to the Dalai Lama and somebody else, uh, this is incredibly disempowering. The mushroom said to me once, it said, for one human being to seek enlightenment from another is like uh, uh, a grain of sand to seek enlightenment from another. The message, my interpretation of that being, all grains of sand are capable of seeking enlightenment on their own damn steam, you know. I mean, the, not that p you people around you don't have something to teach you, but an understanding in the person sitting next to you is not your understanding. And so it does you absolutely no good whatsoever. Uh, it is only, it is only uh, efficacious and functional if it's yours. And, and so um, the, primacy of the, 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 prim the primacy of direct experience and one's own history and mathematics and you know if you really study mathematics we mentioned this the other night you even get your legs cut out from under you there because you discover this thing called the incommensurability theorem which shows that even simple arithmetic can't be trusted so it turns out you know even our platonic faith in some kind of philosophical super space out there that we're measuring everything against that that's naive Really, the only really real thing is this incredibly evanescent, ever-moving, barely grasped, hardly understood thing called the present moment as I experience it. And you say, well, my God, can you build a metaphysics and an ontology and a heuristic method on, on that? What choice do you have? Nothing else is as real as that is. You know, you, if, you, if you 
know the language of theoretical biology, you know that a human being, an organism, is a chemical system with granted other properties, perhaps not derivative from chemistry, but a chemical system that is riding far from equilibrium. It's in a kind of, it's, there are different terms for it. It's a dissipative structure, or it's an autocatalytic hypercycle, or it's undergoing autopoiesis. But the basic concept is that it is maintaining itself as a coherent entity in a universe flowing toward entropy. It's somehow making its way uh, the opposite direction. And you know, your, your consciousness is embedded in one of these uh, dissipative structures, which will, and apparently, your consciousness will cease at a certain level of disequilibrium of this system. But then when you draw back further, you see your consciousness is simply the reshuffling of the genetic deck of your ancestors. And before you existed, people potentially or partially like you existed. And after you exist, people potentially like you exist. So, the, but this, this non-dissipative energy flow where consciousness and life and everything is going on and is known through feeling, through not, not because you're embedded in it, but because you are it. Essentially, it's not something that you're embedded in, like a particle. It 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 is your your essence. Well, then that's all there, all that is given with certainty. Then everything else is extrapolated outward from that through convention, language, poetic intuition, religious revelation, dis projected discovery, myth so forth and so on. But that's all so far from this point of uh, immediate experience. That's why, the, to my mind, although I don't think we've ever put it quite this way before, the psychedelics are so important because taking a psychedelic drug is not like reading a book or even like moving to Italy for six months. Or it is, it is directly and immediately addresses this thing which you are. It becomes part of it because what you are is metabolism. You know, the, the way this trick is done where this dissipative structure can come into being and then ride magically uh, away from the entropy point is because as biological systems, we take in highly organized matter, food, and we extract all the energy and everything useful from it and excrete it out. And so by this means, uh, we overcome uh, the, the general drift toward entropy. Metabolism allows life to happen. Metabolism is life in some sense. Well, the drugs are metabolized. You know, this is a fairly intimate way of relating to a substance. Put it inside your body and let it dissolve into every, uh, every cell of your being. So metabolism is, uh, is uh, like the primary domain of communication. It's the communication mode of the felt presence of the immediate experience. And the, the, the drugs work there like food. They're not that really that different than foods. They, you know, like it says in the Jefferson Airplane song, it feeds your head. I guess she was actually quoting Lewis Carroll. But in any case, it feeds your head.